Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to understand the rendering behavior in React when dealing with parent and child components. Let's begin by setting up the components. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new folder. The folder name is parent child. Within this folder, I'm going to create a new file called parent.js. This component is pretty much the component we used for the use state video. So I'm going to copy paste the code and make the necessary changes. From useState.js, copy the code and paste it in parent.js. Change the component name to parent and the log statement as well. So this is our parent component. Next, within the same folder, I'm going to create another file called child.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rafc to create a function component. The JSX is going to be child component and we need the all important log message. Child render. I'm going to include this component in the parent component JSX. Make sure to import it at the top. All right, we now have the setup done. Let's include the parent component in app.js and head to the browser. On page load, you can see that we have two log messages, parent render and child render. This is because of the default rendering behavior in React. When a parent component renders, React will recursively render all of its child components. In our example, on page load, the parent component will render, which in turn will cause the child component to render. Hence, we have the two log statements. Now, let's talk about re-renders. In the parent component, we have the count state variable and three buttons to change that count. We've already seen a single component's rendering behavior with the useState hook. Now, let's understand how that affects a child component's rendering. The first case is when the new state is different from the old state. In the browser, if I click on the first button, the count value increments. In the console, you can see there are two log statements one from the parent and one from the child. This is because of the default behavior we understood a minute ago. useState set a function causes the parent component to re-render and if the parent component re-renders, the child component will also re-render. The second case is when the new state is the same as the old state. This can be further categorized into two. Let's first talk about 2a, where we call the setter function passing in the same state value right after the initial render. Back in the browser, let's reload the page and talk about this second button. This second button calls the setter function but sets the state to zero, which means the new state is same as the old state. If I clear the console, and click on count to zero, we don't see any log statements in the console. We've already learned in the use state video that if the old state is the same as the new state, React bails out of re-rendering the component. In our case, React bails out of re-rendering the parent component. If the parent component did not re-render, there is no need for the child component to re-render. Hence, no log statements in the console. Next, let's talk about 2b, where we call the setter function passing in the same state value right after the component has re-rendered one or more times. Back in the browser, let's reload the page and talk about the third button. This third button calls the setter function but sets the state 
to 5. Since the new state is different from the old state, React will re-render the parent component. If the parent component re-renders, the child component also re-renders and we see two log messages in the console. Now comes the interesting part. I'm going to clear the console and click on the third button one more time. The setter function is called with a value of 5 again which means that the new state is the same as the old state. We've already learned in the use state video that after a re-render, if the old state is the same as the new state, React will re-render that component one more time as a safety measure, which means that our component will re-render one more time. You can see the log message parent render, but we don't see the message child render anymore. So this is an exception case. When you call a setter function or a dispatch function with the same state value after a re-render, React will render the parent component just one more time but will not re-render the child components. The parent component has to be rendered one more time just to be sure if it's safe to bail out from future renders. Now in this video, we have seen the example with the useState hook but the same holds good for useReduser as well. So this is the rendering behavior in React with respect to parent and child components. Let's go over the render and commit phase diagram to understand what happens. We start with the component tree. We have the app component and the parent component. Nested inside the parent component, we have the child component. When we click on the button in the parent component, the state hooks set a function is called which flags the parent component as needing an update. During the render phase, React will first go through the component tree and identify the flagged components. It sees that parent is the only component that needs an update. React then uses the createElement method to convert the component's JSX into a React element. When doing that work, React sees that the parent component has a child component. The child component was originally not flagged as needing an update. However, because its parent component rendered, React now proceeds with the render phase for the child component. The JSX for the child component is converted to a React element. Once the React elements for both parent and child have been created, React will then diff the elements produced from the previous render to the new render. React makes a note that only the parent component has changed while the child component has no changes and ignores it. Finally, the changes that correspond to the parent component are handed over to the commit phase where the changes are applied to the DOM. If you've understood so far, that is awesome. But there is one point that I want to stress on. In our example, every time we click on the first button, we see that the parent component re-renders and so does the child component. But the DOM node that the child component represents is never updated. Let's refer to the render and commit phase diagram to understand this better. You can see that for the child component, the JSX was converted to a React element and the new element was diffed with the old element. Since both the elements were same though, React did not have to mount anything to the DOM. So the child component went through the render phase, but not the commit phase. This is commonly referred to as an unnecessary render. React went through so much work in the render phase only to ignore or discard the render output and not apply it to the DOM. If your app had 10 components and the topmost component re-rendered, all the other nine children components will also re-render by default. Rendering itself is not a bad thing. It is how React knows whether it needs to actually make any changes to the DOM. However, unnecessary renders, as we call them, do affect performance 
and we will learn more about optimization in the coming videos. But for now, let's summarize what we have learned in this video. In React, when a parent component renders, React will recursively render all of its child components. After the first initial render, if a setter function or dispatch function is called and the new state is the same as the old state, the parent component will not re-render and hence the child component will not re-render as well. However, if the parent component has been rendered before and if a setter function or dispatch function is called and the new state is the same as the old state, the parent component will re-render one more time but the child component never re-renders. Alright, starting next video, let's take a look at a few optimization techniques to prevent unnecessary re-renders. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe, I'll see you guys in the next video.